So you've put on your Raptor liner and you want to know how to touch it up. Now we've got the Bandit here. We've had this out on the race field. We've managed to hit a Subaru. It bent the bonnet. We've hammered it back, but you can see here it's all flaky. Now, we're going to repaint this and we're also going to paint the guards. Down here on the guards we were finding due to the suspension travel it was pulling down on. So we hammered up and hemmed the guard, but it's cracked all the paint. So we'll go through now and show you how you repair this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove all the flaky paint. You can see here, it's all coming off. Now that's due to the fact that that's been folded down a fair bit. The paint's gone past its elasticity point and broken and cracked and delaminated. Now for us to paint our polyurethane directly over the top of this, we're going to want to sand it so it keys in. So I've got an orbital sander here. You'll get away with using anything from 80 grit to 180 grit. There's a little 120 on here. Now, we're gonna paint everything that's black here. What we'll probably do actually, we'll do a fade out up here. So I won't sand that bit, and we'll sand from here, and we'll fade out, see what we can get away with. Now the concern with a polyurethane is that for it to key in, you're gonna to wanna to sand it. So where I don't sand it, there's risk that it could delaminate. So, in this area of the bonnet here and right down this front guard or fender we're going to sand it all back so all the shine's gone it's set it up that the paint can key in if we go through to bare metal we'll just get some pressure pack etch primer to seal up that bare metal and then we'll paint over it so you can see here with this particular vehicle it's had a few birthdays there's a, a number of colors the truck was originally blue, there's another couple layer of primer there, it was purple, then it was white, and then maroon. Now, what we did notice where the flaking was, was between where that initial, the factory paint was good, so you know you're pretty confident with your factory primer, and then your factory base coat and you're clear, but it was that second layer here which was the grey which you saw everything flake off to. What we suspect has happened is, that was either sanded too fine, that it was too smooth, for that then base coat to stick on top. So that was the first layer of paint that separated and delaminated. The good thing with the Raptor is that it's thick, the viscosity. We can sand this with 80 grit and you're not gonna get shrink back. So you're better off going coarser, having the confidence that the paint's gonna key in and stick in. But if you do get damage, I mean, to the extent we had damage here, you're most likely gonna crack it because you've pushed the paint beyond its flexibility level. But sanding it is going to be king, and that's going to assure that you're not going to get the gurney and paint's going to flake off, which potentially would have happened with our two-pack finish that was under here. So we've sanded down our Raptor with 80 grit. Now when they advertise this as five times harder than two-pack, it takes a bit to sand. Now, we're ready to mask it up. What I've done is blown the dust off this. I'm gonna use the U-Pole panel wipe. I like this product because it sprays out, as opposed to your prep wash. To initially wipe this down to get rid of all the dust on it, we can cover a large surface area, wipe it down, mask it up, and then we can come back through and do another clean just before we paint. So this is a water-based one, a wax and grease remover. You can use a solvent-based one, whatever you prefer. I just like this one for bigger areas as an initial clean because it's quick and easy to get over the surface. Yep. So we've got it all masked out now. These bare metal areas, we're going to use our etch primer just to spot prime those. We'll give it about 20 minutes and then we'll paint over it with our Raptor. We've also got a solvent based prep wash here which we'll wipe this down first, hit it with the etch primer, and then we'll paint it with our Raptor. Now we've got a 1K etch, there's the U-Pole brand which they're gonna recommend specifically for theirs, otherwise we've got another brand here. Both of these are 1K etch, I don't care what you use, they're both gonna do the same job. Now their sole purpose is to seal up that bare steel, so we're not gonna use them on all this black area and paint over it here, we're purely going to cover the bare steel here that's exposed, anywhere else where you've got to rub through. Cross here, touch that up. We're going to let that flash for 20 minutes and then we're going to paint over it. So we're ready to go. We've let our etch primer dry. 
Now make sure you've got a charcoal filter mask on here because this does contain oxycyanates. So if you're using it in a, a shared environment where your airflow is limited, put a fan on, make sure you get rid of it. I've used some disposable overalls here because it will stick to your arms. So we're ready to go. We're going to paint all this out black and then across here where we haven't sanded, I'm just going to fade it out and then we'll evaluate what you can get away with on the finished result. So what's the verdict on the Raptor? Now you can see here, this is where we tried our fade out. There's a bit of dry spray. And what I'm going to put it down to, it's more so the fact that it's the gloss level that you can see the difference. Where the fine mist has come out, it's changing the sheen level that you can notice on different angles. A difference where it's satin, more matte, and then more satin. So if you're going to do a fade out with the Raptor, you're probably best to try and hide it in the valley somewhere or on an edge but you're gonna notice it. So you're almost better just to mask off, paint out the whole thing. As far as adhesion goes, we sanded this up so it was quite coarse. Even over here, if I drag my nails on it, it still feels like it's stuck quite well. I still wouldn't be confident to paint directly over it. Just by habit, I'd always go back and sand it to ensure you got a good key in.